spirit of the island for today so what we should say about this game firstly this is a digital game right now based on the cardboard game so the official description of this game says that this game is relaxing life simulator rpg set on a distant tropical island explore the once prosperous tourist destination meet the locals and land the heart restored to town to their form and glory as you embark a long journey that will help you rediscover your past the Pile of Two Spirit Island will feature two player cooperative modes, so you can grab your friends and embark on the epic journey together. Explore the archipelago, fight the pirates, find epic loot, and discover the secrets of the tropical paradise. Interact with almost every object in the game and express your creativity with hundreds of recipes to unlock the item craft. Build new attractions, hire staff, develop the island, and plan the parties that will attract vision from all over the world. Make quickly characters, complete fun quests, make new friends, and contribute to the life of island inhabitants. So this is all about the, the official description says. But given the social aspects of the board game is what makes them so appealing to me. Digital versions uh, simply don't appeal to me. That say I was surprised to see how much I enjoyed the digital edition of Spirit of Island. I thought to myself maybe I misjudged as I purchased um, Spirit of Island. But after my experience, I believe that uh, it was an outstanding time to chill. Spirit of the Island puts players in the role of nature spirits, presiding over the island inhabited by the narrative tribe and Dehen. But as story tells us, where there is untouched land, there is an Eastern European nation who wants to colonize it. In waders are coming, and only the Spirit of Island and the Dehen can people push them back. A game of Spirit Island is about constantly making difficult decisions, often even with sacrifices. The game takes place over the series of phases, the first being the Spirit's phase. At this point, every player takes their actions seamlessly, choosing from the character grown options. Their options will include adding a new person's token on the board, gaining a powerful Kyle, gaining energy or reclaim discarded power cards. Um, players that choose which powers they will play for the turn, speeding the necessary amount of energy. Choices of powers are limited by both their energy costs and maximum numbers of card players are permitted to play in a turn. As the game goes and on the spirits add more presence onto the board, the values will increase and open up the possibilities. Power cards fall into the two classes, either fast or slow abilities. Once everyone has selected their cards, the game proceeds on the fast power stage. At this time, any frost abilities that players selected can be triggered now, in any order that players agree upon. In each power, the ability has a chance of significantly altering the board state. Choosing to use the selected powers in the wrong order could make many of them ineffective. After all, fast powers has been activated. The inviters will attempt to build their towns and cities in your lands. In the board game, all the related information is located on Invader board. There are three spaces on the board, Explore, Build and Ravage, which dictate what the Invaders will do where on each round. Face-up cards drawn from the Invader deck will tell the players which terrain tape the Invaders be acting. For the sake of Explore, let's just say Jungle card was drawn is currently face-up to the Explorer space. On its round, Invading Explorers will be added to every jungle space adjacent to existing city or town. After all qualifying jungle spaces have new explorers aided, the wetland card will slide left into the build space and new card is drawn and placed into the explore space for the next round. In the following round, the jungle can cards the jungle cards is now in the build space. This means that every space containing the wilders will construct new structures in the jungles. If you are explorers even number present, of cities and towns, a new town, a new town will if a town be is already present, if there are more cities towns than the cities, after that city. it gets added. No matter how you look at it, the situation will get progressively worse than the island inhabitants. After the building, the new explore card will go in effect. Like the previous round, explorers will enter the land described on the invader card. We'll use the wetlands this time. Explorers will be added to all wetlands next to space with a city, or a town, or a coastal area. Afterwards, both wetlands, jungle cards will slide down to the left, and a new card is drawn and placed into the explore for the next round. So. Much of the joy spirit of island is the collaboration and discovering new ways for spirits to play off another and thwarting the colonization in riders. But this is where the digital version of the game starts to fail. Up at this point, Hannah Ballard digital adaptation has been enjoyable and a critical translation of the game, but in the end, it fails due to the limitations of the new medium. One of the first things I noted the spirit of the island does not have the multiplayer mode at 
one player, that's fine, but takes away from what's already a fantastic multiplayer experience. The lack of cooperative play in Digital Edition takes a significant amount of fun out of the game. Well, so to sum up, I will divide it by four topics. So the graphics, the gameplay, fun factor and the sound. The graphics takes the same beautiful artwork and display in the vibrant and high resolution fashion. Details like some mountain shading on a 3D island board um, aren't very really clean though. The gameplay is, despite its UI flaws the, and lack of multiplayer, Spirit Island is still the same great game. While I can't recommend buying the digital version over the board game, going digital is the best for existing fans who want to quickly play a game on their own without the setup. I'm really not a fan of the game sound effects as they all just sound too kitschy. However, the addition of the island themed music and it's so much the game atmosphere that I'll never play another game of Spirit Island without it. I definitely have my complaints about missing features and UI cluttering taking away from the overall experience, but Spirit is Island makes it good enough. So the final verdict is 8 from 10 and you have to play it on the PC of course. All the links I will leave in the description so you can go and buy this game on the GOG or on the Steam, doesn't matter. Thanks for watching, bye bye.